Hi everyone, it's Professor Crimson, and today we're going to talk about spherical coordinates. So in the previous video, we talked about how to convert from cylindrical to rectangular coordinates and also rectangular coordinates back to cylindrical coordinates. In this video, we're going to talk about how to convert from spherical to rectangular coordinates and also how to convert from rectangular to spherical coordinates. So let's talk about spherical coordinates. When you have the Cartesian coordinate system, the location of a point in space is actually described as an ordered triple, x, y, comma, z where each of the coordinates actually represents a distance, where the x-coordinate is actually the distance from the y-z plane, the y-coordinate is actually the distance from the x-z plane, and the z-coordinate is the distance from the x-y plane. In cylindrical coordinate system, we found out that the location of a point is actually described in terms of two distances, where you have r and z, where r was actually the distance from the origin to the point in the x-y plane, and z was actually the distance from the x-y plane to the point p. And we had this value for theta, which actually was an angle formed between the positive x-axis and the ray op in the x-y plane. In the spherical coordinate system, we again are going to use a ordered triple to describe the location of a point in the three-dimensional space. However, the ordered triple actually describes one distance and actually two angles instead. We're going to find out that spherical coordinates actually makes it very easy to describe a sphere, just like with cylindrical coordinates actually is very easy to describe a cylinder. And so this is how you actually describe a point using spherical coordinates. So let's say you have the point P, which is actually an X comma Y comma Z, and you actually want to describe this using spherical coordinates. Well, there's going to be one distance and two angles that are going to be formed. We're going to use the Greek letter rho, which looks like a P, to describe the distance from the origin to the point P, X comma Y comma Z. And so this distance along the ray OP is actually called rho, and rho will be a positive value or equal to zero. And we also have the angle theta, which is the same theta that actually was in cylindrical coordinates. It's the angle formed between the positive X axis and the projection of the point into the plane xy plane where you have the point o to this projection of that point and so this angle theta is actually formed between the positive x-axis and this ray from the projection of the point into the xy plane however you also have one more angle this angle phi the greek letter phi is actually the angle formed between the z-axis and the line segment op and so you can represent a point in rectangular coordinates as x comma y comma z but you also can represent the point using spherical coordinates as follows it's the point p as rho comma theta comma phi. So again, with spherical coordinates, you have the point rho comma theta comma phi of a point P that's actually in three-dimensional space, and rho is equal to the distance between O and P, so it's the distance from the origin to the point P, and rho must be a positive value or equal to zero. Theta is the same angle as it was in cylindrical coordinates, and the angle phi is the angle between the positive z-axis and the line segment OP. So based on this definition, we know that rho must be greater than or equal to zero, and then angle phi must be between zero and pi only, including the endpoints. So let's look at these next three surfaces. We actually looked at these three surfaces in the previous video when we talked about cylindrical coordinates. This was a half plane that actually passes through the z-axis. In cylindrical coordinates, this equation was theta equals c, where c is the angle formed between the positive x-axis and it was the ray between O and P. Well now, if you have a point P that's actually projected into the XY plane, it's still going to be the same ray between the origin and this point P that's actually a projection into the XY plane. And so this angle is actually C. And so you can write this half plane as the same equation as cylindrical coordinates. So it actually will be theta equals C. However, the advantage of actually using spherical coordinates is actually you can write the equation of a sphere very easily. So a sphere actually centered at the origin, 0, 0, 0, and a radius of C is actually the equation rho equals C, because rho was actually calculating the distance from the origin to a point. Well, if the point is on the sphere, then the distance must be always C, and so rho must be always the value C. And so this is a spherical equation for a sphere. And then if you have a half cone, you actually have the equation phi is equal to c because phi actually was calculating the angle between the positive z-axis and the ray op. And so notice in this equation you have phi equals c. It does not involve the variables rho or theta. And so imagine if you have a point that's actually on this half cone, phi is actually equal to c. So the angle must be the same angle no matter where the point is on the cone. And so if c is between 0 and pi over 2, you get the upper half cone. And if you have c is between pi over 2 and pi, you actually get the lower half cone. And so phi equals c is actually a spherical equation for a half cone. And just like with cylindrical coordinates, there actually is a relationship between rectangular coordinates and spherical coordinates that are actually established using right triangles formed between the origin, the point, and either the y-axis or the z-axis as shown in the following figure. So notice that you have this point P, which is in rectangular coordinates x, y, z, or if you want to write this point in spherical coordinates, it's the point rho, theta, phi. Notice that there actually are two triangles involved. You have the triangle O, 
P, P prime, that's this triangle that's denoted in red or pink. And then you also have another right triangle that actually is formed between O, Q, and P. So using right triangle trigonometry, you actually can notice that O, P, and Q, and O, P, and P prime, they're both right triangles, and you have this relationship. Z is actually equal to rho times cosine of phi, because if phi is actually representing the angle between the positive Z axis and the ray O, P, then cosine of phi is actually equal to Z divided by rho, which is actually equal to adjacent divided by hypotenuse. So if this is the right angle formed for your right triangle with the Z axis, then the opposite side is rho, that's the hypotenuse, and the adjacent side is z. And so cosine of phi is z divided by rho, which is adjacent divided by hypotenuse, or which if you solve for z, you, you'll get z equals rho times cosine of phi. And then also with this other right triangle, you have O, P, P prime. That's a right triangle formed with the x, y plane, where you have this point P prime at the point x, comma y, comma zero. Notice if you use right triangle trigonometry with this right triangle, the opposite side from this right angle is the value rho, and then the adjacent side is this value r. And so if this is phi in your right triangle, the opposite side from phi is the value r. And so you notice that the relationship sine of phi is opposite divided by hypotenuse using right triangle trigonometry, which will give you r divided by rho. And so if you solve for r, you actually have r is equal to rho times sine of phi. However, we also know the relationship for the values for theta, because theta is actually the same theta as in cylindrical coordinates. Well, that means that x must be equal to r times cosine of theta, and y must be r times sine of theta. And so if you actually make those replacements in those equations, z equals rho times cosine of phi, and r equals rho times sine of phi, you actually have the following formulas to actually convert from spherical coordinates to rectangular coordinates. x must be equal to r, well r was rho times sine of phi, so that will be rho times sine of phi times cosine of theta for the value for x. The y is equal to r times sine of theta, well r again is rho times sine of phi, so you have y is equal to rho times sine of phi times sine of theta. And then z, we already had, z was equal to rho times cosine of phi. And so these three equations will actually help you convert from spherical coordinates back to rectangular coordinates to find out the x, y, and z coordinates. And then let's say you want to convert from rectangular coordinates to spherical coordinates. You actually need to find out what is the value for rho. You can use x squared plus y squared plus z squared to actually talk about what is the distance from the origin to the point p, because p was actually the point x comma y comma z. So if you have x squared plus y squared plus z squared, if you square both sides of the equation, that actually will give you rho squared. And so rho squared is equal to x squared plus y squared plus z squared, and that's coming from the distance formula in three-dimensional space. And then one important note is that there's not a universal agreement on the notation for spherical coordinates. Most textbooks in physics actually reverse the meanings of theta and phi, and then they also use r rather than rho. So example five, we're going to convert from spherical coordinates to rectangular coordinates using the formulas that we just established. Find the rectangular coordinates for the following points given their spherical coordinate representation. So number one, you have this point in spherical coordinates, two comma pi over four comma pi over three. And so recall that spherical coordinates are actually represented as the point P is rho comma theta comma phi. So that means that rho is equal to two, theta is pi over four, and phi is equal to pi divided by three. So let's use the formulas that we just established. We know that x will actually be calculated as rho times sine of phi times cosine of theta. And so if you make all the replacements, rho is equal to two, phi was pi over three, so you have sine of pi over three, and then cosine of theta will become cosine of pi over four. And so x will be two times sine of pi over three times cosine of pi over four, which will be two times sine of pi over three is equal to root three over two, and then cosine of pi over four is equal to root two over two. And so if you simplify, you'll have root six divided by two. So that's the x coordinate in rectangular coordinates. The y coordinate can be found by using the formula y is equal to rho times sine of phi times sine of theta. And again, phi is equal to pi over three, and theta is pi divided by four. And so the y coordinate will be rho is two times sine of pi over three times sine of pi over four, and then sine of pi over three will actually give you root three divided by two, and then sine of pi over four will actually give you the same value as cosine of pi over four. So you again get root two over two. And so if you simplify, you'll have y is equal to root six divided by two again. So the x and y coordinate are both the same in rectangular coordinates in this case. And then the z coordinate, it has its own equation. It was z equals rho times cosine of phi. Well, phi was actually pi over three. So you have z is equal to rho was two times cosine of pi over three. And so cosine of pi over three is equal to one half. So two times one half will give you one. And so the same point as spherical coordinates, two comma pi over four comma pi over three in rectangular coordinates would be the point root six divided by two for the x coordinate, root six divided by two for the y coordinate, and z is one. So let's try one more. Number two, let's convert this point that's actually in spherical coordinates to rectangular coordinates. So let's say you have the point negative two comma negative five pi over six comma pi over six. So notice that rho will be negative two, theta is negative five pi over six, and phi is pi over six. 
And so again, we can use the same formulas that we established before. X is equal to rho times sine of phi times cosine of theta. Y is rho times sine of phi times sine of theta. And Z is equal to rho times cosine of phi. So let's find out the X coordinate first. You have X is equal to rho times sine of phi times cosine of theta. That means that X is equal to negative 2 because rho is negative 2. Sine of phi will be sine of pi over 6 times cosine of theta will give you cosine of negative 5 pi over 6. And if you simplify, you'll have X is equal to negative 2 times sine of pi over 6. Sine of pi over 6 is equal to 1 half. So you have negative 2 times 1 half. And then cosine of negative 5 pi over 6 is actually equal to negative square root 3 divided by 2. And so you have negative 2 times 1 half times negative square root 3 divided by 2. That simplifies to just be square root 3 divided by 2. So that's the x coordinate in rectangle coordinates. And now the equation for the y coordinate is y times rho times sine of phi times sine of theta. That will give you y is equal to negative 2 times sine of pi over 6 again times sine of negative 5 pi over 6 because theta is negative 5 pi over 6. And so if you simplify, you'll have y is equal to negative 2 times sine of pi over 6 again is 1 half and sine of negative 5 pi over 6 is equal to negative 1 half. So if you simplify, the y value will be 1 half. And then z is equal to rho times cosine of phi, which will give you z is equal to negative 2 times cosine of pi over 6 and cosine of pi over 6 is square root 3 divided by 2. So the z coordinate will be negative 2 times square root 3 divided by 2 or simplifies to negative square root 3. And so this point in spherical coordinates, negative 2 comma negative 5 pi over 6 comma pi over 6 is actually represented as in rectangle coordinates as the point square root 3 divided 2 for the x coordinate, the y coordinate is 1 half, and the z coordinate is negative square root 3. Okay, so now in example 6, we're actually going to convert from rectangular coordinates back to spherical coordinates. So find the spherical coordinate representation for the following points given in rectangular coordinates. So number 1, we have the point x, comma, y, comma, z as the point 0, comma, 2 square root 3, comma, negative 2. So x will be 0, y is 2 square root 3, and z is negative 2 in rectangular coordinates. We're going to take this point and convert it to an equivalent spherical coordinate representation. So let's find out the value for rho first. We know that rho squared is equal to x squared plus y squared plus z squared, and that's obtained from the distance formula in three-dimensional space. So that means we have x, y, and z given to us. We can find out the value for rho. Rho squared is equal to 0 squared for the x squared plus 2 square root 3 in parentheses all squared plus z was negative 2, so it be negative 2 in parentheses squared. And so if you simplify, you'll have rho squared is equal to 16, which means that rho must be 4 because rho must be a positive value or equal to 0. So rho will be 4. So now recall that both the x and the y coordinate both involve the th angles theta and phi. However, the z coordinate actually only involves the formula for phi. So let's find out phi next. z is equal to rho times cosine of phi. Since we just found out the value for rho, we can find out what is the value for phi because we were given also the z coordinate, which is negative 2. So if you make z negative 2, rho we just found out was 4, so negative 2 is equal to 4 times cosine of phi, and now solve for cosine of phi. Divide both sides of the equation by 4 to get cosine of phi is negative 1 half, and now if you want to solve for the angle phi, take the inverse cosine function on both sides of the equation, or arc cosine. So you have phi is equal to arc cosine of negative 1 half, which is the angle 2 pi divided by 3. So that's the angle phi formed between the z-axis and the ray OP, where this is the point P that's actually given in the problem. And now that we know what the angle phi is, we actually can find out what is the angle theta. So let's use the equation y equals rho times sine of theta times sine of phi. Notice that we know what the value for phi is now. It's 2 pi divided by 3. We also know the value for rho. That was equal to 4. And we actually have the y coordinate is 2 squared 3. So now we can find out what is theta. So y is equal to 2 squared 3. Rho is equal to 4. So we'll have 4 times sine of theta times sine of phi, well, that will be sine of 2 pi over 3. So if you simplify, you'll have 2 squared 3 on the left side of the equation is equal to 4 times sine of theta times sine of 2 pi over 3 is actually squared 3 divided by 2. And now if you isolate the sine function of theta on one side of the equation, you'll divide both sides of the equation by 4 and also divide both sides of the equation by squared 3 divided by 2. And that will give you sine of theta is equal to 1. And that occurs when theta is pi divided by 2. And so now you have the values for rho, phi, and theta. And so you can represent this point in rectangular coordinates, 0, comma, 2 squared 3, comma, negative 2, in spherical coordinates as follows. It's the point rho, theta, phi as 4, comma, pi divided by 2, comma, 2 pi divided by 3. So let's try another one. Number 2, you have the point in rectangular coordinate system as negative 1, comma, 1, comma, squared 6. And we want to convert this point to an equivalent spherical coordinate representation. So that means that x is negative 1, y is 1, and z is squared 6. And so let's find out rho first. Using the equation rho squared is equal to x squared plus y squared plus c squared. That means that rho squared is equal to negative 1 in parentheses squared plus 1 squared plus squared 6 in parentheses squared, which will give you 8 on the right side of the equation after you simplify. So rho squared is equal to 8. And since rho must be a positive value, you take the square root on both sides of the equation. You have rho is equal to square root 8 
which is 2 squared 2 after you simplify. So now we have the value for rho. Now let's find out the value for phi using the equation z equals rho times cosine of phi. Well, z was given to us as squared 6, so that's the left side of the equation, is equal to rho, which was 2 squared 2 times cosine of phi. So isolate the cosine of phi on one side of the equation. So divide both sides of the equation by 2 squared 2. And that will give you cosine of phi is equal to root 3 divided by 2. And now take the inverse cosine function on both sides of the equation to isolate the phi on one side of the equation. So you have phi is equal to inverse cosine of root 3 over 2, which is the angle pi divided by 6. And so phi is the angle pi over 6. And now let's find out what is the value for theta using the equation y equals rho times sine of theta times sine of phi. So y was given to us as the coordinate 1. So 1 is equal to rho, which is 2 root 2 times sine of theta, which we'll find out was theta. That's unknown to us right now. And then you have sine of phi, which is sine of pi over 6. And now isolate the sine function on one side of the equation. So you have to divide both sides of the equation by 2 root 2 and also divide by 1 half. That will give you sine of theta is equal to root 2 over 2. And that means that the angle theta must be pi over 4. And so the point, negative 1, comma 1, comma root 6 in rectangle coordinates is actually the same point in spherical coordinates as the point 2 root 2 for rho, theta is pi over 4, and phi was the angle pi divided by 6. So let's finish up with example 7. We want to find a spherical equation for a hyperboloid. So find an equation in spherical coordinates for a hyperboloid of two sheets whose equation in rectangle coordinates is given as this, x squared subtract y squared subtract z squared equals 1. So we know this is a hyperboloid of two sheets where the surface is actually along the x-axis. If we want to convert this to an equivalent spherical equation, we know relationships for x, y, and z as follows. x was equal to rho times sine of phi times cosine of theta, y was equal to rho times sine of theta times sine of phi, and z was equal to rho times cosine of phi. So let's make those replacements in this equation. So x squared will become rho times sine of phi times cosine of theta all squared minus y squared will become subtract rho times sine of phi times sine of theta all squared, subtract z squared, which will be rho times cosine of phi all squared. And this is equal to 1 on the right side of the equation. So now square each of these expressions. You have rho squared, sine squared of phi, cosine squared of theta, subtract rho squared times sine squared of phi times sine squared of theta, subtract rho squared times cosine squared of phi, and that's all equal to 1. Notice that all three terms on the left side of the equation all have a rho squared in common. That can be factored out from all three terms. But also notice from the first two terms, they both have sine squared of phi in common. So you can factor out sine squared of phi from the first two terms only. So if you do that, you'll have rho squared times sine squared of phi factored out from the first two terms. What's left over will be a cosine squared of theta, subtract sine squared of theta, and then the last term will be rho squared times cosine squared of phi, and that all equals 1. So the only thing that we can do is notice that cosine squared of theta subtracts sine squared of theta. This is a relationship involving the angle theta that actually is a trigonometric identity involving a double angle for the cosine function of theta. And so rho squared times sine squared of phi and then cosine squared of theta minus sine squared of theta is actually cosine of 2 theta. So that's the first term. And then the last term was minus rho squared cosine squared of phi and that all equals 1. And so the best that you can do with spherical coordinates for a representation for the hyperboloid of two sheets along the x-axis is as follows, is rho squared factor out from all the terms times sine squared of phi times cosine of 2 theta, subtract cosine squared of phi in parentheses all times rho squared, and it's all equal to 1. And so this is an equation in spherical coordinates for a hyperboloid of two sheets along the x-axis. So this finishes our video on spherical coordinates. We actually talked about how to convert from rectangle coordinates to spherical coordinates and also talked about how to convert from spherical coordinates back to rectangle coordinates. And then we also talked about how to convert rectangular equations into an equivalent spherical equation. If you have any questions about any of the examples in this video, please let me know. And if you have any questions while you work on the homework for this section, please let me know that as well. And I'll see you at the next video when we talk about vector functions and space curves.